Kevin Barry here bringing you the updated summary for 2015 for our Seafarer Tax Talks. If ever you want to register with us, just go to that website there on the screen, irisseafarerstax.ie. Uh, we have various other websites which I'll touch in a minute, but this is the one relevant to this seminar. So I held these in Cork and Athlone. Previous year, I always stick with Cork. I was in Donegal, Dublin, Athlone this year. Uh, even though I'm from Galway, I haven't actually done Galway yet, so must get there. But I, I just want to make you a kind of a little promise. I'm going to show you, and if you get about 55 minutes, that's when I'm live. This is the recorded one. This is what we're going to show you, who we are and what we do. Just a quick summary: the eight items every seafarer must know. And if you log on to my website, you can download that. Records to always keep resident seafarer versus non-resident seafarer issues. This is the big one. You might be a seafarer working on a cruise ship or a drill ship or an oil rig. Are you tax resident or non-tax resident? That's a major one. Mortgage issues. This is a new one. A lot of people are buying property now in Ireland again. There's, especially for first time buyers, there's mortgages there, but there's documents that you'll be asked for and how we tackle those. Married versus single considerations. New things have come to light in the last 12 months. The differences between the UK and Ireland and little traps to avoid. So magically, that's not going to take 55 minutes at all. How did that happen? 25 minutes. If, if you haven't already dealt with me, if you check out, just Google me, Kevin Barry Accountants. These are various websites I have an involvement in. IrishSeafarerTax.ie, BarryAccountants.ie, GrossAccountants.com and you can read yourself. There's our Facebook page use the product we're helping get produced at the moment businesses that work totally okay so it's all there won't we'll dwell any more on that right get straight to the point this is all aimed at from an Irish point of view what is the seafarer the first thing is you're an employee not self-employed that's the first thing on a ship that travels to a foreign port or platform a bit different to England but a platform is a foreign port in Ireland uh, it's airside which I'll touch on in a minute but it's a fixed place you're carrying passengers or cargo to it and you're 161 days at sea okay so there, there's the definition now the difference between a resident seafarer and a non-resident seafarer so let's deal with the resident one talk about month on month off for instance you live in Ireland your month out, out at sea, you come back, month out at sea again, or two weeks on, three weeks off, that type of stuff. You have an Irish address, you pay tax to Ireland, that's a resident seafarer. The non-resident seafarer is an Irish person uh, who is less than 140 days on average in Ireland per year, but they work abroad, they work for a foreign organisation, and they perform their services abroad and are paid from, from a foreign pay point, not from an Irish pay point. So they might come back to Ireland less than 140 days a year, which on average is 30 days every three months, and you've still got 20 days spare. They have a foreign address. That's not essential, but, it, but effectively you're not here. You're coming back here to relations and that. But effectively you're not living in Ireland or working here anymore. But if that's the case, you don't owe any tax here. Okay? So that's the key difference. Are you residency fair or non-residency fair? Okay, the airside rule, this is an important one. Effectively, if you come into Ireland at all, you're here. Now, in England, or Great Britain rather, there's this midnight rule that goes on in a few other countries too. That as long as you were gone by midnight, you, you, you were never here. That's been abolished many years ago in Ireland. So, effectively, if a ship pulls into Ireland and you get off it and walk around the town, you're in Ireland, even though you might be here for just an hour. And that could be a yacht as well. However, the airside rule means if it's, say you're in departure lounge and your plane is held up and you're stuck there for a day or two, whenever the plane was meant to have left, you're effectively gone, even though you're still here. So you're in departures at Shannon Airport or Galway Airport or Dublin Airport or Belfast Airport. There's some hold up. But as long as you stay, what's called airside, not coming back out into the open terminals, you're effectively gone. The same thing is effective if a ship docks in Ireland. If it docks down in Cork or Cove and you don't leave the ship or leave the confines of the port, well then you're effectively still at sea. Okay, that's the airside rule. So 
That's an important, that can be an important point. The midnight rule, yeah, it doesn't apply here, it's the English thing, so... Uh, but the day coming, if you arrive into Ireland at 11 o'clock at night, you've effectively been here all day. If you leave Ireland at 2 in the morning, you've effectively been here all day. So those are days. So when I talk about the 140 days, from a residency point of view, that if you're in Ireland, 140 days or more, the day coming counts on those 140, and the day leaving counts. So even though you might not really have been here for most of those days, they still count as being in Ireland. All right. Now this is the tax discount you get if you're an Irish resident seafarer. Okay, you don't have to be an Irish person, but you're living in Ireland. You're a tax resident seafarer. Essentially, what happens is on your tax return, all your income goes in on it. As long as you were 161 days at sea, then a further. 6,350 of your income is, is classed as being tax-free and if that were taxed at the top rate that saves you 2,600 per year. Okay? You also can claim any other normal tax deductible expenses such as medical expenses, non-routine dental care, rent allowance, college fees, this type of stuff. But the extra thing you get is the seafare allowance. But you must be 161 days at sea on a boat as an employee carrying cargo okay? or people. But that's yet. Okay, what does it mean tax wise? There's a big difference. And there's days flying around, there's a lot of misinformation out there. But I'll summarize it here and you can come back to it, okay? There used to be this rule many years ago that if you were less than six months in Ireland, you didn't live here. The rule is still there, but it's ineffective now. So the 183 day rule is as long as I'm out of Ireland 183 days, I'm not a resident, that's gone now. The rule now is 225. Okay, and in very simple terms, if you're in Ireland 140 days or less per year, but then you, you, you have the option of not being tax resident here as long as you were working abroad and being paid by a foreign organisation and the money paying you is coming from a foreign pay point. Okay, all days count coming and going, but there's no tax on the income you earn abroad coming in here. However, if you have a house rented out in Ireland, even though you're non resident, tax on anything happening in Ireland will occur if it's you know, significant, such as you buy and sell shares, you rent property, or you get deposit interest. But unless it's over a couple of thousand a year, there won't be any tax on that either. But just be aware if there is money arising in Ireland and you're not resident, but well, then there could be a tax bill. Okay. Another one, say you do become non resident. Well, the rule is that for the next three years after you become non resident, you still have to file an Irish tax return just to prove it. So you leave the country, you work abroad in America or something, but you're still meant to file a tax return every year. I've never seen any sanction about that, but the rule is there, so they could hit you with a fine if they discovered that you hadn't filed it. But generally, a lot of people don't even know about that, so it, it's not as common that it happens. The, yeah, the amount of money you can earn tax-free in Ireland even if you don't live here, it's 3,810, but it has to be investment income, okay? The same applies to most other countries. If you've money in investments out there, the first few thousand is generally tax-free. just seems to be a common enough rule around the place. All right, these are the records to be keeping. This is an important list. So if you're not keeping these, start keeping them, okay? I'll jump down to the third one there, the diary. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at a shelf there behind you. The diary, you don't have to keep track, even in paper terms yourself, where you are. So keep a diary of your days coming, going, and where you are. The first one, the discharge book, on informal arrangements. And I've been talking about employees a good bit, even if you're self-employed or a diver. And when you get on a, a boat, get off a boat, the discharge book can be stamped by the captain. And it's a great record of when you were at sea and what vessel you were on, and then when you leave, be it at a foreign port when you when you left the, the ship. Okay, discharge book is a great one. There's a photo ID in it, we scan it. It's great evidence of number one being at sea, number two being abroad, number three the type of job you do. Your passport, if you're going into non EU countries, that'll get stamped. The diary is just listed where you are day in, day out. It's no harm to keep that. We can do that online. Receipts or anything you pay for to do with the job that you're not reimbursed for. Could be doing a course, could be Travelling abroad, could be flights, um, payslips, 
details of the foreign address you stay when not on board a, a ship or vessel, who your employer was, that might be on the pay slip, or if you're invoicing, there may be a contract between you and them as to what services you're doing and for what price. The foreign bank account, this isn't essential for non-residency, but I, if, if someone is non-resident or at least working abroad, there's two or three things here. It's reinforcement of the fact that you're not living in Ireland in case it comes down to any type of dispute, because at least when you're getting paid, the money is initially offshore and then it can be transferred in, rather than it being transferred into Ireland directly. And what I mean by that is in Great Britain now they've kind of changed the rule and they've all these links, if you've read various links with the country. So an accusation that's open over there is you might be working abroad, but all your money is coming into Ireland or into England in that case, and it's being used to pay off your home mortgage or whatever. So you might be working abroad, but you're really living here, and then they try and tax you. So it, it's not implausible that the same argument would be made here. So if you Google Barclays Bank Offshore or Lloyds Banking, these are above board bank accounts, there's no problem with that. But they, they sue people who work internationally. You can have various currencies and the money, they're used to people working for foreign organisations and money coming in from different sides. Okay. Second thing is if you're married, file separately to your wife. Okay, this is one to work on the non residency. If you're self employed, uh, I find that all the self employed are, are rarely off. They're always thinking of work on that. So every holiday is a business trip, I tend to find. They tend to go somewhere where they want to have a look at something and maybe take a few days off. But keep track of those days. And if you went to a trade show or you went looking at various types of hulls in a marina, okay, you might have had four days golfing and four days doing a bit of even quotations. Um, keep track of it because it means some of the holiday, so-called holiday, is really business and can be claimed for. Bad weather days, the ash cloud one time stopped a lot of people getting to where they should have been. The missile crisis over in North Korea, where they were moving missiles up to the border, that's only about a year ago, stopped a lot of people, they had to get out of South Korea. Um, little things like that keep track of any interruptions, and that's where the diary comes in, okay? Traps to avoid if you're non resident. The important thing is, it's just a hassle of it having to hire the likes of me, but traps to avoid are, are all to do with not drawing attention to yourself, okay? So if you do become non-resident, so you can be member of tax resident versus non-tax resident, okay? So, but if you are becoming tax resident, don't forget to file for three years after you're gone. They might all have zero on it, but file them anyway. Getting the days wrong, keep a good track of the days coming and going, maybe to do with boarding cards or Keep track of the flight details, but don't get the days wrong. Someone got the days wrong one time and the cost was savage. Pension planning. Apparently, I, I didn't know this recently, but if you're a non-resident, the pension companies can't open a pension for you here. Now, if you're not paying tax, you don't have any tax discount, so there's no tax issue. It's just if someone wants to open a pension, but personally, I would say just a, open a savings scheme. It'll be the same thing. There's no tax issues that you're losing out on, and the savings scheme will be fine. Okay, but if you are non-resident, I don't think you can pay into your Irish pension. Now, will they pick up on it? I don't think they will, but a guy couldn't open one lately. Illness insurance. 70% uh, of people are more likely to be seriously ill before they're 50 than die. That's the rule. So if you're getting critical illness cover, there's something, say you get cancer and you have to battle it for a couple of years, well, it's good to have this illness insurance in place before you start travelling around the world and move into Ebola type territories, alright? Okay, I'll show you a couple of examples now. These are typical examples. They're true examples, I've just changed the names, so just, just to give you an idea. Here's your typical residency fairer. Someone who works month on month off, in this case it was BP offshore, working on a ship carrying oil tanker. Okay, his income was 45,000 a year, although he was over 183 days gone from Ireland but more than six months out, as it turned out, he was less than 225 days gone, which in other words means he was more than 140 days per year in Ireland on average. So he did qualify for the seafare allowance, which means an extra 6,350 of income is tax-free, but his tax bill, including PRSI and social charge, and tax was 11,557. So an effective rate of 26%, just to give you an example on that amount of money. Okay.
single guy. Here's someone not a million miles different, but they were non-resident, okay? It's a lady. She was working on Stena Sealink. She was less than 140 days in Ireland or more than 225 days out of Ireland in that year, 2012. Sorry, it was 2014 though this happened. Quick change there. So the numbers are exactly the same. So she was became she was working outside Ireland, not being here at all. Um so because she was non-resident in two, 2014, okay, she saved herself a tax bill of 14,177. Now, the funny thing is, if you are less than 30 days in Ireland the, the year after you leave, there's no what they call a look back rule. What you're meant to do is look back a couple of years and see where they resident. Is this 140 days average per year true for this year and last year? But if in the next year you're less than 30 days in Ireland, you're clearly gone. So they don't even look back. So this girl was less than 140 days in Ireland in 2014 and less than 30 days in 2015. So there was no looking back before 2014 just to see would that have pushed her out of the job. Okay? That's an important one. So often I tell people don't be in Ireland less than 30 days next year and you're fine. And that's you, you keep yourself right with the rules. Now I just put this example in just to show other options. In 2013, had she been 270 days out of Ireland, which is extremely non-resident, okay? She's clearly non-resident that year. But in 2014, if she was more than six months in Ireland, okay, um, she'd be in the danger territory. But what happens is you look at the day she was out of Ireland in 2014, which was 180, and 2013, the year before, this is the year before situation, which was 270. And between the two years, she was 450 days out, which means that she hit the 140 days in Ireland on average for those two years. So only a two year average, the year you're in and the previous year, okay? So even though she was not she was in Ireland more than 140 days in 2014, the amount of days she was out in 2013 saved her. This is how technical it can be. So she didn't pay any tax in 14, even though she was here over 140 days. That's the type of exception that can go on. There's an item called split year, whereby you're part of the year in Ireland and part of the year in another jurisdiction. So you only pay tax on some of the year here, on some of the year here, and not the rest. Okay, so little quirks. This is why you might need professional help. This is a self-employed example. This is true as well. And this was Mary. Yeah, she was an engineer working good, good money on an exploration vessel, month on, month off, residency fairer massive tax bill. With her though, because of the type of duty she had, it made legal sense to form a limited company for liability reasons and that cut her tax bill by 43,600. Now you might ask, how can that be? Well, how it works is, is a company is like a different person, they've lower tax rates, being an Irish resident company and this lady was doing services that you know you want to protect yourself legally if anything, if anything goes wrong and contractually and the people she was contracting with that they prefer to see a company that they're dealing with you know so if you take all the money out of a company you pay income tax on it but if you don't need all the money to come out of it well what's left behind is only tax at 12.5 percent and it was from that she was able to reduce her tax bill by 43,600 savage stuff okay Okay, so her tax bill was 67 and it came down by that amount. Massive saving. So it can suit self employed people who are doing subcontracting services offshore and the employer you know, is fine whether you're a sole trader, which is just yourself, or a limited company. Okay, employed in the wrong word, the main contractor. This is a new query this year, it wasn't on last year. Um, a lot of non resident people who were offshore for a few years saving up and then buying houses. They still need or feel they need to apply for an Irish mortgage if they're buying a place here. Prices are rising and they mightn't have all the money together, you know, so they've got to go out on a limb. So we have we've a lot of people who file tax returns even though they're non-resident here because it proves, number one, that they're earning legitimate money, not illegal money, okay? Because we put on it what they've earned, where it came from and why it's not taxable. Because they're filing tax returns, they're filing tax returns somewhere. Okay, that's the second thing is, 
we can stand over it and say all their tax affairs are up to date in this country. It explains where the money in their bank account came from. And if they're looking for life assurance for the mortgage, at least they have, you know, defined banking arrangements coming in. Okay. A couple of difference between Ireland and the UK, just to touch base on them. Um, with the UK, you must stop into a foreign port to get your tax back. We have people who do the UK tax returns for us now. Uh, it can be tricky enough, even though we're licensed and authorised to file UK tax returns. Whatever way it works with the postage over there, they seem to put very minimal postage on it. Everything gets to us too late. And logistically, it's getting difficult to work with them. So we've uh, other people who handle that for us now. Uh, but the midnight rule applies there, it doesn't apply here. That's, if you're gone by midnight, you're not there. UK waters, for them, 12 miles offshore. Sometimes it can go further for us here. You must call into a foreign port there. The flag of the ship is relevant over there. The 183 days rule is relevant over there. Uh, if you're paying national insurance in the UK, you can get a free metal car that works in Ireland. If you're paying national insurance in the UK, say on one of the ferries, well then you get a double PAYE tax credit here to compensate you for paying expensive insurance over there. And if you're non-resident in the UK, there's different residency rules that have come out there that are about 120 pages long. They'll probably creep in here. So just be aware if you're a UK person who's non-resident there, that there's various new rules that will tie you to the country that they may look for tax off you in the future. But not many know about this now because that's December 13, it's pretty recent since it came in. Moving swiftly on, nearly done. Some considerations that we're finding lately, and this can be tough on a relationship, but if it's a case that the husband or the wife is tax non-resident, and the husband, the other spouse is resident here, so mind the kids, put them through school, work in their own separate career, um, the way to file is two separate tax returns. There's three ways of filing a tax return. There's individually, that you're a single person, is jointly as married people, and then you can still be married or cohabiting, but you file separate assessments. So you have your tax affairs, and the spouse has their tax affairs, okay? And where it's a case where one of the couple is non-resident, we have them file their own tax return because they're working abroad for a foreign organization and being paid from a foreign pay point. Their tax affairs are filed separately, that's it. The other spouse then will file a tax return for them if they're self-employed or if they're not self-employed, would we'll still file a tax return because that protects their children's allowance claims, their old age pension entitlements, and everything is answered there, okay? Um, so there's no clouding of the issue. Just another item, if somebody becomes non-resident, you can make a voluntary payment for PRSI once you do it within a year of leaving. Now that's a new one. Before you could go back and file pay the 500 euro per year for each of the last two or three years, but they've tightened up on that now. You must file within a year of leaving. So if this is 2015 and I become non-resident this year, within a year of today, I need to have my 500 paid to protect my old age pension entitlements here in Ireland and healthcare issues. So that's the rule at the moment anyway. Sorry, jumping around a bit there. Fee-wise, when you join us, the first year is 840 euro and then every year after that is 615. We haven't changed it for a long time. And if you go onto our website, you'll see fixed fees, and there's various discounts to make that cheaper, and there's various payment plans that might suit your circumstances over time. There's four or five ways of paying it, <coughs> but that's what you can expect. We have various forms you need to sign up at the start to register for tax and to allow us to represent you. And if you do need a limited company, it's approximately 615 to form it and get the bank account opened and all the registrations done and it's an additional thousand euro a year extra work that needs to be done because it's like forming a separate person okay but these are typical fees but we tie up everything in advance in writing with an engagement letter or so and listen if it doesn't work out no hard feelings so what can you do now um if you have any queries there's no harm to go onto our website ircfarestax.ie and you'll see there's an online seafarer questionnaire. It's also on this website, barryaccountants.ie. You click accounting services and click seafarers. It's all there. And you know, we're done in five minutes, and then we'll come back to you with an opinion on your situation. We'd like to tell everyone in January or as early in the year as possible 
if they're going to be resident or non-resident, what the day issues are working out at, the amount of days. Remind them what records to keep. And I would always say, the better we can educate you, the easier it is for us to do the job for you. So we'll have little emails and, you know, short little emails every month about things that, to draw your interest to in them, to help you keep better records, okay? So if you have any questions, just email them. Uh, you can register with us on this irishseafarerstax.ie. Download our we have a list, little list of records you must always keep. And just the other website issues we have going on, we have this membership site as well, where a lot of other really kind of other self-employed or pretty mobile employed people, we have different things going on there as well. But these are for our businesses that work situation. You might come across that. So take a look. Any issues, call me and we'll chat soon. Kevin Barry. So I made you three promises. Remember the items I was going to go through? There they are. Who we are, the eight items you must know, records to keep, resident versus non-resident, seafarer issues, mortgage issues, married versus single, differences between the UK and Ireland, and traps to avoid. We're done. Chat soon. Bye. <laughs>